How bad is Anthem's platinum? Is it bad enough gonna make me feel like Will Smith after Red Table Talk? Or is it bad like when you drop the soap in prison and no one makes a move? Well, today I'm gonna find out by getting the Anthem platinum myself. You remember Anthem, right? That game with incredibly high potential that looked like it would be a destiny killer. The game that had me and millions of other gamers super hyped for its release. And considering it was developed by BioWare, the geniuses behind Mass Effect and Dragon Age, it was destined to be a banger. Well, not quite. It ended up being called one of the largest commercial live service failures of our lifetime. Now the game itself is the embodiment of why you should never pre-order. But what's the Platinum like? I want to see if a bad game can still deliver an enjoyable Platinum. Probably not. But for science, let's find out. So on paper, Anthem's Platinum is a 3 out of 10 in difficulty that will take roughly 70 hours throughout one playthrough. It's essentially a C rank in Faruski Clan difficulty, so not too bad. Of course, as any trophy hunter should, let's break the Platinum down into steps. Step 1 is to tackle the story in the side missions, and step 2 was to get the collectibles and clean up. In other words, the grindy sections, which also includes the rarest trophy in the game. For this bad boy, you'll need to get around 700 different collectibles. In addition to that mammoth task, most of the other trophies in this step are tied to weapon and gear challenges. The weapon challenges require you to get 50 kills with each of the weapon type variants, and the gear challenges requires you to have each unique skill equipped for each of the javelin classes for four missions. It is worth mentioning I made these challenges much harder than they needed to be, because apparently my brain is so small it could revolve inside a peanut shell for a thousand years and not touch the sides but we'll get to that a bit later on for now my only thought was a platinum that's a three out of ten in difficulty and only needs two steps i think we're onto a winner here <laughs> What a, what a foolish, foolish boy, boy I was. Out of the total of 47 trophies, there are 2 gold, 11 silver, and 33 bronze. Now it's worth mentioning the idea to research this platinum wasn't even mine. It was Lewis's, aka Platinum Bro. With his reputation for doing stupid things combined with my reputation for being easily persuaded... <laughs> Personally, Joel, I think the only justifiable course of action is for you to be ploughed down by a bull. Okay. One hour later. And his name is John C. The moment he proposed to tackle this platinum in a four-way with Stephen Crimson, I was down faster than Leonardo DiCaprio dumping his girlfriend after she turned 26. I'm over here. I've got into a pit. <laughs> <laughs> Have no fear, guy. Faruski is here. <laughs> it's coming down. Yeah, oh my God. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bag, drop her, drop her low. Mama called me and she happy with the girl. Now before we could all jump on the co-op wagon, we had to play about an hour or so of solo content. I can't deny the graphics in this game are incredibly good, most of the time anyway. Bro, what the hell happened to the graphics now? I did find some minor annoyances on my way. Oh, why? Nah, 1 out of 10 bro, we can't pet these things, that's why the game failed. But overall, it was enjoyable. Ah, oh, first trophy! So far, so good. After the tutorial was over, it was time to choose my class. There are four classes in total you can choose from, but to make things interesting, we all decided to randomize which class each of us would get. The Lewis got the Interceptor, Steve got the Storm, Crimson got the Colossus, and I, I got the Ranger. It's morphin' time! And just like that, the boys were ready to take on Anthem. Oh, look at the boys! Now, co-op-wise, the plan was for all of us to drop in and out whenever we wanted and just casually help each other out. But for now, we were just enjoying each other's company while figuring out the game's mechanics. I'm overheated. I've got into a pit. I'm going to overheat. What is this? Some baddies. I'm a slice of... Oh, I just blew myself up. <laughs> I do have to say this, even though I'll probably regret it later, but regardless of the overheating issue, flying an anthem is incredible. In addition to this, the scenery is truly majestic. This made flying an anthem almost as satisfying as swinging in Marvel's Spider-Man. It's a bold statement, but it's true. At this point, I honestly didn't understand where all the hate for this game was coming from, until the story itself started unraveling, and then I got a little bit of an idea. Although the graphics and voice acting were great, I don't have a clue what the story is about, because it wasn't interesting enough to keep me engaged. I stopped paying attention about three sentences into the dialogue. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is act out the story sections with what I think happens. Long ago, there was an epic war between the freelancers, which is us, 
and some northern invaders called the Dominion. I am William Wallace. Old William Wallace wanted to control the anthem beneath the city. It was a hard fought battle, but ultimately the freelancers failed as a result of main character plot armor not yet being in effect. Stand your ground and fight! Two. However, the anthem cannot be controlled. Access denied. The Dominion are now led by this guy, whose name I haven't really bothered researching, and are once again looking to control the Anthem by collecting relics. Now Anthem does offer some customization, but it's not great. We'll pretend the character customization doesn't exist because it's more disappointing than my performance in bed. The Javelin customization, however, isn't too far behind either, to be honest. Any visual upgrades are all locked behind microtransactions or stupidly priced in the in-game store because for some reason the devs didn't think visual loot drops were needed in a looter shooter. The loot you do get from missions and enemies are either weapons or gear attachments. And even that's pretty flawed. But we'll get to that a bit later on. For now, all I could do was customize the color scheme but naturally it had to be green and black. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that I found some minor annoyances with the game, and it didn't take too long to find another one. Oh, trophy! You get it? Not yet. I haven't, no. Wait, this is pure racism. Seems like story-related trophies only pop for whoever is hosting the online session. Great. But since these trophies weren't missable and we were having a blast playing together, we ignore this little setback. Oh, oh we just God. comboed! Oh, a little dog. <laughs> Killed it. Oh! We did start finding the missions were a bit too easy, so we flicked the difficulty up to hard. Not much changed. <laughs> oh, oh, big boy. Big boy. Oh, oh, he's got a skull. Time for the illness. Come okay. on, deal with him. Hey, skull. <laughs> Anthem also does offer a few gear trophies related to your javelin level, so after a few missions and gear upgrades, me and Lewis popped the Uncommon Talent Trophy. Oh, I got a trophy. You got Uncommon Talent? Yeah. Yeah! You got a wish trophy? Steve, however, didn't. Maybe your javelin's common, not even uncommon. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Anyway, we essentially eradicated anything in our path, no matter what the game threw at us, from scars, scorpions, dominion, and even big colossus beasts, nothing was a challenge. Until we attempted a stronghold mission. Stronghold missions are special events of sorts, similar to raids. They're split up into sections, and they more than make up for the lack of difficulty in the story. While going through the stages, we had to coordinate our movements, communicate, and genuinely support each other. It was glorious. As soon as we started, we took some damage from some measly mines, and this immediately gave us some insight of what we were in for. The first objective was a simple one, gather eight echoes. However, it didn't mean it was going to be easy. If these turrets had a problem, we should take these turrets out, it would be- Oh, fucking hell! Ah, my shield! Oh, I'm over here! Oh, fuck! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm surrounded. Back to world. A speed frisky turn. We need, we, need, we need to rendezvous, everybody. We need to be together. The echoes in this fucking thing, which means you have to kill the scars first. Oh, this is getting spicy! Oh my god! In a nutshell, after a hell of a lot of shooting, dodging, and reviving, we finally collected all the echoes and moved on to the next stage. Instead of soldiers, we were surrounded by bugs. Imagine Starship Troopers, but you play as Iron Man. And because the area was so big, we decided to split into two teams. Team 1 would take out the electrical charges that stopped us from being able to fly, and Team 2 went to town on the bugs. We eventually did finish this stage, and it was time for the boss. The mother of spiders, Charlotte. Despite knowing we would need to maintain the same level of concentration, I stupidly got distracted, overheated, and got one shot by Charlotte. Sadly, once we figured out its weak spot, it was over faster than the time it takes Michael Bublé to come out of his cave during Christmas. Now that's a lot of damage! Overall, it was the hardest challenge we'd faced, but also the most fun we'd had so far. Sadly, there aren't enough of a variety of these missions to keep you engaged, a theme that would be so, so familiar in this game. But we'll get to that bit later on. For now, we carried on with story missions. We've waited two years for this! Old friends are reunited in today's Bush Tucker trial where Halluk is tasked in eating a Scorpodon stinger. Look at that man deep throating that thing. Then it was main character's turn to eat a pheromone sack. 
delicious. As a reward for our bravery, a smuggler princess has agreed to aid the freelancers. No doubt bonds have been made today. Of course, we all know that nothing lasts forever, which includes playing games with friends. There's only so much Platinum Bro I can tolerate within a certain time frame. It's like hanging out with that weird cousin that you only see at family gatherings. It's fun at first because you've not seen them for a while, but then they tend to overstay their welcome. As a result of not being able to pop any story related trophies while playing on co-op, the first thing I did was repeat those missions for my daily dose of dopamine. Now my tolerance levels to Platinum Bros on a similar level to the disgust phase after self-gratification. Once it wears off, it's time to go at it again. So before we knew it, the boys were reunited. This time we decided to take on a Stormgate. This mode is similar to the previously mentioned Stronghold mission, although it wasn't as hard. The only worrying part was the no respawn. Essentially, if you die, you're out. Now this mode mainly consisted of waves of enemies, a set time to destroy some ice pillars in between waves, and a boss fight at the end. Another mode with potential, but again, not enough variety to keep you engaged. Before the boys and I went our separate ways once again, there was still time to complete a mission with a rare javelin set to pop the rare talent trophy. Since I was on my own again, I decided to start working on getting the collectibles and completing challenges hand in hand with completing the story and side missions. I do realize previously that I said I'd be going for this platinum whilst doing these steps, but Technically, since you can go for all the trophies at once, I thought it'd be a good idea to start grinding early to save myself from dying of boredom in the endgame stages. With that in mind, I started choosing the right weapons and gear, which to be fair was easy to keep an eye on since you have a challenge tracker. In addition to this, I aimed to get as many of the collectibles as I could to start chipping away at that mammoth rare trophy. However, it wasn't that simple. For starters, none of the collectibles show up on your map and you have to be within smelling distance for them to show up on your compass, which meant I had to use guides. The other issue was that some of them were RNG and to top it off, the weapon and gear drops are also RNG. I'm gonna be honest here, this started to really sour my Anthem experience. But while I was in my collectible quest, I found a certain someone doing the exact same thing. Seems like even when the boys aren't planning to play together, we end up finding each other. Anyway, after a very synchronized hello, we met up with Crimson, where together we worked on the collectibles and challenges in perfect sync, similar to how Jesus Christ would fit nicely in the Bee Gees. And once again, the ugly side of Anthem was forgotten, for now. During our time together, I managed to complete three light mission gun challenges, but like the idiot I am, I wasn't recording at the time. So here's a timestamp instead. What I did do was record Crimson's foolproof method of gathering the RNG collectibles. It's pretty boring, but definitely effective. All we did was talk about how much Crimson loves hentai while entering and exiting one of the tombs of the Legionnaires to refresh the world and pray to the Anthem gods that one of the collectibles spawned. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. Luckily for us, the gods were on our side and we managed to get all 25 in one sitting. Considering we couldn't always play together, when we did, we would gather collectibles and complete challenges. In this time, we found all 10 overlooks, gathered all 80 Medarin's writings, which took about three hours. Flawless teamwork was used here, by the way. Steve did all the hard work by using a guide to pinpoint all the collectible locations, while I followed behind like a good little boy and claimed the spoils. We harvested 200 Chimera compounds, found all four Legionnaire tombs, which was also connected to the story. I did it! I found the clitoris! Hello there. You got, you got, you got what I need! Want my property? You can't have it. I'll be back. I am Iron Man. Once the mission ended, I popped the Tomb of the General Tarsus trophy. We harvested 200 Chimera Aloy and discovered all districts, landmarks, and hidden places in a few areas to pop the Explorer-related trophies. Even though there was a lot to collect, it actually didn't feel that bad until I carried on doing this on my own. Without the company of friends and fun chats that mask the true nature of what ruins this game is where Anthem went from, this is better than Destiny, to this is the wish version of Destiny. Only when you're playing on your own, exploring every nook and cranny for these collectibles, do you truly realize how empty this world is. There are no cities to interact with, no characters to talk to, just an empty world with random creatures that give you no reward or penalty for killing, random world events with enemies that moved and acted in the exact same way as in any other event while doing the same objectives and races scattered throughout the map. All repetitive tasks more dull and boring than a conversation with your mother. In addition to this, with a map this big, obviously the fastest way to travel is by flying. And like I mentioned before, it feels amazing to do so, but you spend most of the time not flying because you just keep 
overheating. I didn't realize later on that there are mods to increase flight time and you can cool your engines in several different ways, but I'm not a smart man. So like an IGN reviewer, I'll just complain about the game instead of learning how to play it properly. Shots fired! It's similar to being in a relationship with a psychopath. My honeymoon stage was now over and the true nature of the beast emerged. I wasn't even halfway done with this platinum at this point, but for science, I prevailed. I also can't leave out the painfully long loading times, even on PS5. <laughs> Anyway, I eventually collected all 80 Arcanist runes, which led me to the rest of the RNG collectibles. I used the same method as I did when I was with Crimson, so in and out of different tombs I went, while praying that the collectible would spawn. I fucking hate RNG, and little did I know, this wasn't even the worst of it. But we'll get to that later on. For now, I'll leave you with a reenactment of my emotions while grinding for these collectibles. After what seemed to take longer than a workday when you're hungover, I finally collected 25 Arcanist Archives and 25 SCAR Intel. Now I still had the Dominion Intel and Outlaw History left to get, but quite honestly by this point I was more inclined to be boiled alive than carry on with this RNG hell. So I decided to carry on with the story and side missions. Surprisingly, every now and then random people would join in to help out with missions. I'm not sure if they were trophy hunters in the same path as me, or just people that didn't realize more games had been released since 2019. Regardless of the reason they were playing Anthem, I appreciated the help, since it meant I could complete the missions faster. Ah! Woo! Oh! I'm touching myself tonight. <laughs> gotcha, bitch! <laughs> After this mission was over, I popped the Fortress of Dawn trophy. Oh, fuck you, game. At least it's good to know trophies still pop. I eventually met a woman called Dax. Wow. My aunt disappeared in the jungle. Gone without a trace. My aunt left a journal. So, you in? I thought you'd be bigger. EMOTIONAL DAMMIT! On the subject of NPCs, I haven't really mentioned the amount there are in Anthem. There's a huge amount, seriously. With this many, you'd think there would be a healthy amount of different side missions and character quests. <laughs> Guess again. Apart from the main five or six, the rest are only present to give you loyalty points when you answer a specific way to their dialogue. These loyalty points do inch you closer to a few trophies, but honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So not only is the world empty, but the characters are also hollow. What a great game. Since I was doing side missions alongside the story, I popped the Arcanist Mysteries trophy for completing half of Matthias' side missions and the Restoring Glory trophy for completing Yarrow's side mission. Even though I was happy I was getting my dopamine hits, I was still getting fed up with the game. Every side mission, world event, or story mission seemed to consist of the exact same actions. Similar to Stormgates and Stronghold missions, there just wasn't enough variety. It mainly went like this. Get to this marker. Collect this part. Kill waves of enemies. Mission over. Start another Another mission. Get to this marker. Collect these echoes. Defend the area. Rinse and repeat. Anthem has the same variety in mission design as Vin Diesel does in acting. Constantly doing the same objectives over and over again made it feel like I was making no progress at all. So I made the decision to tackle all trophies at once. Crazy! I know! But this is what the game does to you! I decided to start by getting the rest of the collectibles to finally pop that disgusting trophy. And after about an hour of entering and exiting a specific tomb, I gathered 25 Dominion Intel. For the 25 Outlaw History, I had to do the same thing, but in a different tomb. This collectible spawns right in the middle of an outlaw camp, which meant there were bullets flying about everywhere while I was gathering them. At least it made it a bit more interesting. Once I finally gathered all 25, I popped the No Stone Unturned Trophy. It's done. By this point, I was already over the 40 hour mark and I thought to myself, the worst is over. <laughs> How stupid of me. Despite completing this monolith task, it didn't do much in saving me from boredom in the end game stages, but we'll get to that a bit later on. While doing story and side missions, I popped a few more trophies to keep my dopamine at healthy levels. There were other side missions that I completed, but stupidly once again, I wasn't recording. So again, here's the timestamp. With this one, I'll be honest, I have no idea what this mission was about, so here's the trophy. Do you remember the start of the video when I mentioned that I made the gear and weapon challenges much harder than what they needed to be? I'm about to tell you. By this point, I was finding it a little bit strange that I wasn't getting any new weapon or gear blueprints, even though I saw them in the loot menu. Now, either I was doing something wrong, 
or the game was broken. Luckily for our generation, we have the internet. And after a little bit of research, I found the game really is broken. But that wasn't the issue here. It turns out the devs didn't understand the English language. Whenever I press salvage, I thought the items that I was salvaging would be saved, since that's the definition of the word. I know because I Googled it. However, in Anthem, for some reason, salvage means destroy for parts. So for the last 40 hours of gameplay or so, every time I saw a piece of gear or weapon that I needed, I was destroying it rather than keeping it. Now, I know I shouldn't blame it all on the devs and the game because, you know, maybe I should have just paid a little bit more attention to the tutorials, but I'm going to anyway. It's their fault. Anyway, with this knowledge in mind, I started only salvaging items I didn't want. Lo and behold, I started getting the blueprints I needed a lot more often. I carried on powering through while keeping an eye on my challenge tracker to change gear and weapons accordingly. I'll just remind you that these blueprints are all RNG drops. This ends up being a real problem a bit later on, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, I was enjoying my small victory in understanding the basic mechanics of this game's looting system and popping some trophies on the way. I popped a few more Explorer trophies for discovering all districts, landmarks, and hidden places in certain areas, completed all three shotgun challenges, all three marksman rifle challenges, all three heavy pistol challenges, all three assault rifle challenges, and all three machine pistol challenges. My god, that feels good! I also reached the maximum loyalty with the Arcanist to pop the Arcanist loyalty 3 trophy. With that, it was time to get a bit more insight in the story. Why didn't you call me? It was Owen. I got no family. You is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. That is what I just said. You just said what? I did not say what. I said you. That's what I'm asking you. And you is answering. Shut up. You ruined it and I'm leaving. More side missions became available at this point, so the more bored I got with the same repetitive mission design. I take back what I said before, and I think Vin Diesel's acting has more variety than Anthem's mission design. But what's real? It's family. At least I was still popping trophies. And with every new trophy, it meant I was edging closer to the end of this nightmare. Or was I? It's probably worth mentioning I started getting masterwork gear since this is tied to a trophy. Just keep that in mind. After countless hours, I was at the final story mission. And what better way to end this amazing narrative than with the way we started it. With the boys. Our main NPCs all had inspirational words to deliver before we jumped on. Two-faced bastard. And with our Kennedy at peak levels, we decided the best way to tackle this mission was on the Grandmaster 2 difficulty. What have we done? Ignore the How do you say ignore the turret? What the? I can't ignore the turret. Oh, yeah. Almost one shot me. <laughs> oh, I'm down. <laughs> oh, don't land. Oh, he's getting like... That, oh that my fire god, back. it's a uh, one shot. Under Lewis is literally underneath one. Oh yeah, I was... Fuck, <laughs> You down again? <laughs> If we fail, it's because Ryan's failed. Exactly. That's, that's the only we don't have a healer to blame, so the next one in line, in technical terms, is the tank. The tank. The one that has died the least. Yeah, but we only died expect. because you didn't protect us enough. You broke. Oh my god. All right, all right, you ready? Uh. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a big boy. You're the one, yeah, we're busy actually focusing on the enemy. Ah, yes, but... Oh my god! Shoot your balls, you're gonna die. I'm about to die again, I'm 1 HP. I'm 1 HP now. 1 HP now! Oh, our tank's down. Look at that. Oh, no! There he is! Eat this bitch! Yeah, I'm a top of my own. That did absolutely nothing. And I'm down. This man's got more moves than Michael Jackson, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> oh shit, why did I fly into him? That was a bad idea. <laughs> down again. I'm back with this. After being down more often than an EA server, we finally did it and realized since I wasn't the host, the trophy didn't pop. Oh, no. We did it again, this time with me as the host and on easy. Surely there was no way anyone would be downed on easy. Oh, I forgot down. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> the fire <thing laughs> down me. Everybody shave him. There is it. <laughs> T-Bag. <laughs> hey, oh, what is this? Oh, I'm going to get you guys. Is this? Hey guys, I respawn on my own. Get out the way, get out the way, bitch. 
world was saved, everybody was happy, and I got my trophy, which was covered by Crimson's camera. God damn it. With that, my time in Anthem with the boys had come to an end. Thank you for the memories. And I was left with the rest of the trophies to grind for alone. Now I still needed to finish off the side missions and contracts, complete the rest of the weapon and gear challenges, and max out the faction loyalties. I have to say, the little detail of having Christmas lights and snow in the open world while playing throughout Christmas time was a nice little touch. But just like most of the game, it was just a sugar coating covering the sewage beneath. Anyways, I carried on completing side quests, I popped the relevant trophies tied to them, and managed to max out the loyalty with the Sentinel faction. Like I mentioned before, I was constantly checking my gear and weapon challenges and swapping them over accordingly. So naturally, I eventually completed all 12 gear challenges for the Ranger Javelin. <laughs> Finally! But with victory also comes defeat, it seems. I still needed to complete another 12 gear challenges with each of the remaining three javelins. Now, I haven't mentioned this before because it wasn't really relevant until now, but throughout my time with the game, I was able to unlock a javelin of my choice when I reached a certain level. But by the time I reached this point, I had every javelin available. I decided to go with the Colossus next, since some of the weapon challenges were exclusive to this class. The first thing I did was change it to the appropriate color scheme and equip the best goodies I'd gathered along the way. I have to say, each javelin has its own unique playstyle, which quite honestly was a nice surprise. From the get-go, I instantly felt a massive difference with the mobility of the Colossus. It was a lot clunkier than the... For fuck's sake. Anyway, I finally completed all the side missions and contracts to pop the Honorable Pursuits trophy. At the same time, I also managed to complete all three auto cannon challenges to pop the Cannon Connoisseur as well. Since all stories, side missions, and contracts were completed, I was left with very little options of things to do when getting the remaining trophies. I could either repeat the same legendary contracts that involved doing the same tasks over and over again, but rewarded me with better gear and loyalty points, or I could fly around in free play looking for world events that spawn randomly, also doing the same tasks over and over again, but they would take a lot less time to complete compared to the contracts. Decisions, decisions. Well, I decided to do them both. As always in the back of my mind, I was always checking to see when I needed to change my gear and weapons. Now by this point, I already had 77 hours played, and if you remember at the start of the video, the guide says it takes 70 hours to platinum. What a load of bollocks. This is because the time it'll take you to platinum the game all depends on how lucky you are with the RNG when it comes to loot. Despite my efforts of grinding early on in order to reduce the end game grind, which would save me from wanting to drive at 200 mile per hour towards incoming traffic, Traffic, the RNG hell that this game is made those efforts worthless. Now you may think, like many other games out there, there is surely a way or a certain thing you can do to increase your chances of getting the gear and weapons you're looking for. <laughs> Think again! No matter what you do and how you do it, it's completely 100% RNG. You remember early in the video, I also mentioned that I started getting Masterwork rank gear, so I managed to pop the Master Talent trophy for completing a mission with a Masterwork level javelin. Throughout my time with the Colossus, I completed all grenade launcher challenges, which I have to say were the most annoying weapons to use, and all sniper challenges. These were by far the most awkward ones to use. It's the only time I was actually downed while doing these challenges. Regardless, I had finally completed all the weapon challenges. I finally reached the maximum loyalty for the Freelancer faction and popped the Freelancer Loyalty 3 trophy. I started to feel like the grind was almost over and so was my will to live. But I was wrong about the grinding part. My will to live was long gone by this point. Completed all Colossus Javelin gear challenges to pop the Munitions Maestro trophy, switch to the Storm Javelin, apply the appropriate color scheme, completed all the gear challenges for the Seal Savant trophy, which led me to the final stage. I switched to the Interceptor Javelin, applied the appropriate color scheme, and hopped on YouTube to pop this trophy live. Now, before I pop the Platinum, let's answer the main question. If you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute legend. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments if you agree or disagree with my decision. Now, should you or should you not Platinum Anthem? Well, in my opinion, yes. You must be out of your goddamn mind! But only if you're fed up of being happy or if you think your life is too complete without any form of boredom or depression, then Anthem is definitely the game for you. It will sour your life faster than Geralt agreeing to play Gwen instead of looking for Siri. On the other hand, if you have at least one single functioning brain cell, then Anthem is definitely not the Platinum for you. The reviews are real, people, and the only thing the Platinum adds to this game is more reasons not to play it. Now let's pop this Platinum. After a few hours of doing the same mundane tasks over and over again... Yes! Platinum. Yeah! 
I never have to play this game ever again. Luckily for you, with the beauty of video editing, you saw nothing but dopamine with those beautiful trophy sounds throughout the video. But for me, it felt like being trapped in a time loop for all eternity while dealing with bad RNG, glitches, and crashes. Anthem was my 120th platinum that took a total of 98 hours over the course of four and a half months, which I'll never be able to get back. I'm glad it's finally over so I can uninstall this monstrosity from my console. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And if you didn't, let me know why. If you want to watch me suffer some more with other games, then you should definitely watch one of these videos. Until next time, Guy Faruski out.